Hi guys, today we're going to assemble the first part of our saxophone. We actually stay on this part for a while until we make sure that everybody can make the right sound. Once everybody can make the right sound, we'll put the whole instrument together. Go ahead and have a seat on the floor with your case. Uh, don't open your case, but just have a seat on the floor um, and we'll get started here in a second. Now that we are seated on the floor, we can get started. I have everybody sit on the floor because this makes sure that if you drop it, or actually when you drop it, because you will drop it, it doesn't have far to fall. So most of you, your cases are gonna open with the latches going up like this. You're gonna flip them up to open it. You can also see that the emblem on your case or the logo is gonna be on the upside, okay? If your latches go downwards like this, you're doing it wrong. And when you open your case, your instrument's gonna spill out everywhere. So make sure that your case, the flaps open up like that. Go ahead and open the flaps like this and open your case. Everybody say ooh and ah. We are going to start with just the basic part, which is going to be your mouthpiece and your neck. Go ahead, before we even get started, we're going to get a reed and we're going to talk about our reed. So the first thing we do when we go to assemble our instrument is actually to take our reed and stick it in our mouth. Now, once our reed is in our mouth, we don't want to talk because if you talk, your teeth can actually chip like the very, very uh, fragile parts up here, okay? So what you want to do is grab it right here in this area that we call the bark and just pull it straight out like that. Now, before we stick this in our mouth, I want you to try to figure out how to put it back in. This actually takes a little bit of practice, so we're going to do it right now. To get it back in, you start with what I call the butt of the reed. Just think of this as a baby's butt baby's head. Don't touch the head. The head is very, very, very fragile. So always touch the butt. I'm going to take the butt and I'm going to stick it in to right here, right, right into the little hole here that they have cut. And then I'm going to just slide this down and it'll go down. It's going to be hard at first for you to do. Okay. But if you keep practicing it, it'll be good. Now, biggest reason why we start with the butt, pay attention, please stop what you're doing reason why we start with the butt is if you start with the tip this is what's going to happen you're going to stick it in someone's going to talk to you and it's going to break or you're going to go too far and it's going to hit this edge over here and break again it's like a baby's head the most fragile part of the uh, the reed so start with the butt and squish it in like that practice that oh about three or four times real quickly Go ahead and take your reed and stick it in your mouth, okay? Before we can assemble the mouthpiece and the neck together, we got to make sure that we are taking care of the cork on our instrument, okay? So if you look on the neck of your instrument, there's this brown part right here. We call this the cork, okay? And it's really simple. Sometimes it gets dry, so we need to make sure we lubricate it. I'm going to turn this wheel just a little bit, oops, and get some cork grease out smash some on there or just smear some on there and then wiggle it all the way around with my fingers just like that when you're done you're going to end up with greasy fingers do not wipe this on your pants or your shirt if you do it it's never going to come out your mom's going to get angry because she's going to try to figure out what happened okay and it's it's just really bad i've ruined a lot of pairs of jeans wiping this on my pants best place to wipe it is going to be on your sock because your mama doesn't care if you got a dirty sock just wipe it on there just like that. If you're not wearing socks today, then find a nice place somewhere along the carpet. Wipe it off. But I didn't tell you to do that. That's my secret. Secret. Don't tell anybody about it. Okay? Once you have that part done, all right, then you're going to grab your mouthpiece right which we uh, have already showed you guys you're going to have a ligature on it as well some of you guys are going to have a different looking ligature some of your ligatures are going to be silver looking 
like this one right here. And if you have a silver looking one, it's totally okay. Some of you guys are gonna have a leather one like this. Either way, they all work the same way. They keep your reed on your mouthpiece, okay? So, let's go ahead and put the ligature, I'm sorry, not ligature, the mouthpiece and the neck together. They just slide in like this. Small twist and slide in. Watch again. I'm gonna place it in there. Small twist and I push. These are not small twists. These are huge twists. Small twist and place it in there. You wanna line up the hole that's in the mouthpiece with this part of the saxophone. This is the bottom part of the saxophone, not this part. Now I will tell you, somebody's not gonna pay attention. They're gonna have it backwards like that. If I was there, I'd probably end up yelling at you, so please make sure you're paying attention. The whole of the mouthpiece goes with the bottom here, where there's no keys. There's a key on the top, nothing on the bottom. That's where it needs to go. Your ligature, okay, go and slide your ligature back on. If it fell off, I'm gonna use this one here. But your ligature is going to be situated so that the screw, the part that you tighten, it's going to be the right hand of, uh, 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 is going to be on the right hand side. Okay, it doesn't matter what ligature you're using, whether it's this one or a metal one like this, okay, it's going to go on the right hand side. Sometimes the screw is going to be in the front, sometimes it's going to be in the back, but the part you tighten will always go on your right hand side. Okay, go ahead and try to put your ligature on. Don't tighten anything, go and keep it a little bit loose. This knob, you don't have to loosen it all the way. Just loosen it to where it'll slide on and off, okay? Go ahead and do that real quickly. Pause the video to make sure everybody's got the ligature on there correctly. The next part is putting the reed on. This is actually a tricky part. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about the reed. Just like I said before, you've got the butt of the reed and you got the head of the reed. We never, ever, ever touch the head of the reed, ever, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some space between the ligature here and my mouthpiece. And in fact, so that you guys can see this better, I'm gonna switch it over to the silver one so you can see the hole. So I'm gonna create a space between the ligature and the mouthpiece here. Got it? When I place this in here, the reed is actually going to go in between the space that I've created. It's not gonna go in this hole. And again, someone's gonna try to stick it in the hole because you're not paying attention. It does not go inside the hole. It goes between the mouthpiece and the ligature, okay? So I'm gonna hold the ligature up forward just a little bit, not take it off completely. I'm gonna slide my reed in between the mouthpiece and the ligature, just like that. Using my thumbs, I'm gonna move it down and I'm gonna line up the tip of the reed with the tip of the mouthpiece. Again, that is tip of the reed with the tip of the mouthpiece. Once I have that done, I'm gonna squish my, squish my ligature down. This one I have to tighten, loosen it just a little bit. Make sure I keep it lined up. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to the black one here, sorry. So there we go. Line it up just like that. There should be a line that goes all the way around your mouthpiece and this ligature sits right underneath that line. I apologize. This mouthpiece doesn't have a line because it's, it's a cheapy one um, that I'm using for demonstration. But on your mouthpieces, there should be a line that goes all the way around your mouthpiece and then this sits right underneath it. It's just like a baby's diaper. If you put it too far up, it's gonna make the baby uncomfortable. If you put it way too far down, then you get poop everywhere. So you wanna make sure it's right underneath that line. Tighten it just like you know, by turning the screws, okay? It doesn't have to be super tight. It just has to be where it won't fall off. In fact, if you make it super tight, it's gonna choke your reed. So it's like Goldilocks, not too tight, not too loose, or like a diaper, not too tight, not too loose. You don't want poop everywhere, okay? Anyways, you've got that on there, and that's pretty much it. You are pretty much done. Double check down here at the bottom to make sure that it is even um, across the, uh, uh, down here at the bottom. What you don't want is this. This is not right, obviously. And this is not right. You see how it's crooked and stuff? This is also not right, because that is not the tip to tip. Line up the tip. Don't do this, okay? 
touch down here across this bottom part here and the butt never touch the the head of your saxophone reed okay so anyways we've got that tighten that down show your teacher to make sure you've got it right please do that right now So when you are done playing every day, what you want to do is you want to make a V with your fingers. You want to put the reed in between your fingers and you want to wipe off the, uh, the excess moisture and then put it back in the case. Now, the reason why we do that is because if we don't do that, then things like mold and well, other things kind of start appearing. There's this story about a young lady. Hold on, let me back up. Wasn't one of my students. It's actually a student of a friend of Mr. McPhail's. So if you think I'm lying, just ask him about the story and he'll tell you that it's actually true. But anyways, the story goes that the student was a great student who played really, really well. And then right before Christmas, her sound started getting really stuffy. I mean, the teacher couldn't figure out what it was. And so they have their Christmas concert, all that great stuff. The child leaves her instrument inside the band hall whenever, um, you know, like for, for Christmas break and things like that. When they come back, you know, she goes and puts her clarinet back together and all that great stuff. And she goes to go play. And obviously she puts her clarinet up to her mouth and she goes, no sound, no sound, right? And then on the third try, she did it. And it finally went, like that. And then she took the mouthpiece out of her mouth and looked at it. And a whole bunch of spider babies started crawling out all over the mouthpiece. And it's, again, didn't happen to one of my students, but it's a true story. And ask Mr. McPhail about it because it's, it, he knows the person that it happened to. Okay. So why do we always take our reed off when we're done? Because we don't want mold, first of all. And then secondly, we don't want spider babies, right?